Hello. Oh, so, um, no spill today. Like, share, subscribe. Just like how this dude got me, I got him back. You know what I'm saying? I did some things with my computer online, and I tapped into some things where my studio is at, and I got him back. So, look, before we get into that, I'm going to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links is on the screen. Cash at PayPal is in the description. They call me the hidden gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over, to over 12,000 subscribers. And let me know where you're from. So look, man. We're going to get into this real quick. I'm going to show y'all what I did. And I had to put a stop to him. Yeah. All right, yeah. So here we go. Look at this goofy dude. You know what I'm saying? I had to tap into some things. And I pulled the feet. You know what I'm saying? And he tried to put this episode out. And I already know that YouTube. I heard people saying that YouTube is blocking songs. You know what I mean certain songs, so I grabbed it up, <laughs> and uh, we just gonna watch him make a fool of himself. <laughs> Look at this. Now, I will say this. He look on point, though. <laughs> Yo, he looks on point. I ain't going to lie. He look on point. Look at him, man. He look on point, man. He looks He looks on point, man. That suit, man. That suit, though. That suit right there. You know what I'm saying? Run that back a little bit. That suit, bro. That suit. <laughs> bro. I would wear that suit. I would wear that suit. That suit is fire. I'm not going to lie. Keep it going. Man. <laughs> Look at this. Can't hear you. <laughs> So yeah, let me see what he's reviewing. See what he? Oh shit! <laughs> yo, he wants to. He, yo, he's reviewing this. I know YouTube blocks this. I know they block this. Yeah, you know I'm saying, but he's reviewing this. What is this? This is a. Uh, they thought I was dead. I think that that's that video. I think that that's that video. Let me see. Yeah, I think that that's that video. Oh no, nah, this nigga got in the fucking lab. He got my shades. <laughs> Bro, this nigga got my shades. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy, bro. This is crazy. This is crazy. Damn, that's crazy. Let's keep it going. Look at him go, bro. Look at him go. Yo. <laughs> Crazy thing is, crazy thing is, I hope that uh, when I get back to my studio, he ain't nowhere around. Obviously, he probably ain't going to be, but, but yeah, man, this is, this is, I got to admit, this is dope, though. He did, he doing his thing. He doing his thing. He took over my show and doing his thing, but I got to admit that. So, well, since he's reviewing Tyler's album, um, we're going to watch a little bit more and then I'm going to get into uh, actual, uh, 
the actual video that I was trying to do. And it's crazy that he's doing kind of the same, but let's keep it going a little bit more. Yo, he having a good time, man. Live. Yeah. It's appropriate song for that. So I will be back. Let's see what he's talking about. Now, after waiting more time than we ever have between his full-length studio albums, Tyler the Creator has finally released his brand new and most hyped up record yet, Chromacopia. And while just from a single listen, anyone can tell you that there is so much to discover and digest about this record, what's abundantly clear is that even with the pressure being higher than ever and Tyler being on what has become one of the greatest runs we have ever seen from a rapper in terms of just how amazing the albums he's been delivering are, is that the pressure has not gotten to him one bit and if it has, it's only made him go harder because from the very beginning of Chromacopia all the way until you finish listening to it over 53 minutes later, all throughout the record, you see that Tyler the Creator put everything he had as both a musician and a man into this album to make his most personal and compelling experience to date. And more than ever for his standards, which is already... Now, I will say this. Tyler the Creator, if... Certain things, not everything he does, but certain things. If I was a rapper, like, I'm a rapper, but if I was, a, if I was in the game... Me and him, me and him would be similar in our thought process when it comes to making music and albums. I like his approach. I like Tyler's approach to everything he does because he always keeps you guessing and wondering, but he uses he uses a vivid imagination behind it. It's not really rooted in reality, but it's rooted in fantasy that's kind of like compelling to watch. You know what I'm saying? Like that whole a, a chromacopia just his whole just the way he's doing it to me it's kind of like i look at that and i say it's almost like surreal it's like scary in a way you know what i'm saying with the the, the guy with the with the horns and it just it just looks it looks so 60s horror movie type uh Stanley Kubrick, uh, uh, Kubrick, Kubrick, I always mess his name up, Albert Hitchcock, you know what I'm saying, it's kind of like that feel, every time I see a Tyler, uh, uh, something like that, you know what I'm saying, really, really well put together. Saying a lot, he put more emotion and personality than we have ever seen from him before throughout every single track on this record, which creates such a powerful experience that doesn't just engage you, the listener, more than nearly any other album these days can because of how captivating the prospect of all of this is in its sheer nature. But Tyler goes all out to make every corner and small detail of this project shake and stick with you for a long time to come as he attempts to have us further understand his emotionality and most introspective of thoughts on a level that we have never seen up to this point. And speaking of going all out, make sure you are all in on the channel by hitting that subscribe button so you are updated on everything you need to know about Chromacopia and leave a like while you're at it. And before you see, like, look, this this right here reminds me of something that Albert Hitchcock would do. That's it. That, this is like this video, that video. You know what I'm saying? The video, all the videos that he has done. It's like, and that's another thing, too, that I like about Tyler. He keeps it going. It's a couple of artists that do that, and he's one of them. But he keeps that character going for the whole album, and that's what makes it so great. That's what makes him so great. Let's keep it going. You can even press play on this record from the branding of the character Tyler is playing, whose signature prop this time around is a mask that's covering his face. So before you can even hear Tyler on the intro track, and we hear the album's narrator, which instead of being a celebrity like Jared Carmichael, who narrated Igor, or a hip-hop legend like DJ Drama, who was talking all throughout Call Me If You Get Lost. The tone is shifted, and the precedent for what's to come next is never set in a more telling way, because serving as the voice of reason on this album is none other than Tyler's own mother, Bonita Smith, who kicks off things saying, You are the light, it's not on you, it's in you. 
Don't you ever in your mother effing life dim your light for nobody, which is a super powerful thing to say when you understand that this is advice she gave to her son and ultimately that these words serve as the frame of reference and compass that we see this version of Tyler try to find himself through. And so now with the stakes being this personal, especially compared to an album like Call Me If You Get Lost where Tyler was flexing to levels we have never seen, or even on a record like Igor where despite how emotional that album was, he was projecting everything through a fiction world all throughout. Here Tyler is in his most raw state in all senses of the word and musically, even for his standards which is again saying a lot. He just goes absolutely insane on this thing as he just shows off how versatile his palette is and also how he can seamlessly fuse so many different styles together and put them all into one cohesive body of work. Now um I can agree with that. I could agree with that. I never, I'm be honest with y'all. I've never really been the biggest Tyler the Creator fan. I always liked Odd Future. I like Frank Ocean, and I like I actually like Earl Sweatshirt the best out of all of them. Um, but I think Tyler he showed his longevity out of the two, out of the three he showed his longevity, and I think Earl Sweatshirt is the better rapper, the better lyricist to me, but Tyler is the better creator, and then obviously. You know, um, but out of both, out of all of them, I definitely will say Frank Ocean is the best. But I think that the problem with Odd Future, and I think it was somebody else, but I don't know his name. But they should have just stuck together and they should have did more music together. You know what I'm saying? I think they definitely should have stuck together. Um, I don't know if they did some things together because I really didn't follow their career as much as as I should, I, I really followed the solo parts of them, like Nostalgia and, and the uh, Dubas and then uh, Tyler. You know what I'm saying? But I never really followed them as a cohesive unit. But I can understand why people would put Tyler in that place and why he would be where he's at today. He definitely worked for it, and I think that we should start having this conversation about who's the next big three or the new big three, because. I'm taking J. Cole out of my big three. I'm sorry. And I don't know if I'm going to replace him with Tyler. I don't know about that. But I'm taking J. Cole out of my big three. And I might even take Drake out of there, too. To be honest with y'all. But I'm taking J. Cole definitely out of my big three. I might have to replace him with either Future or or somebody else. Maybe, maybe Kanye less. Even though Kanye kind of like, you know, came before them. But still in all, like. I got to I got to take J Cole out. I'm sorry. And while on the biggest songs Tyler previewed before the record, such as the intro track Saint Chroma and Noid, these cuts sounded so intense and experimental, and hearing them in full, they definitely are. The musical scope of this project is so much bigger than just this. And while when many artists try to expand their sonic reach too wide in one album, they end up failing and making their record sound like an absolute mess. And this was one of the worries some people had for this album, as it did seem like Tyler was shifting back into the territory he explored in his 2015 album Cherry Bomb. Tyler thrives by living in unpredictability here, and this really should be no surprise as when we look at the album run he has been on leading up to this, from the melodies of Igor to the rapping of Call Me If You Get Lost to everything in between, Tyler has mastered all of the pillars of his craft and here uses everything he has grown into over the years to give us the ultimate highlight reel performance where we will see him rap with more aggression and conviction than ever on a track like Ra Ta 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 but then just a few tracks later create a hypnotic and atmospheric ballad like Darling Eye and now beyond these songs just being a way for Tyler to show that it's another thing that and here's a criticism that I, that I don't like about Tyler and this is what this was from back in the day my criticism of him I've always felt like they were trying to do too much. They were trying to trying too hard to be accepted, and 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 what I mean by be accepted by be, just being too weird, being weird because believe it or not, Odd Future is the reason why you got a lot of weird rap now. I and I stand on that a hundred percent. But they was doing a lot of weird things. Twelve but p.m. I kind of like I don't know. I just feel like like they uh. And sometimes I feel like they just try too hard to try to be weird. Like I seen this one clip where they was doing an interview and one of the dudes he stood up with a with a hoodie on and just stood and put his arms out in the air and just stood there for twenty minutes or some shit like that. And it's like, come on, bro. It's like, why do y'all have to try to be weird? It's like I guess that's what it is. They was being odd, but I don't know. It, it to me it was a turn off 
and I and I kind of had to just listen to their music without listening to them. I know they did the whole scared straight thing, and I thought that was pretty funny. No, I ain't gonna lie. Some of those skits were funny, but outside of that, man, some of the stuff they were doing, I was like, I don't know about this. But besides that, the music to me, I always listen to their raps. He may just be the most versatile artist out in music right now. I'd go as far with that statement at this point because who else is really rival? I don't think about, I don't know about that. He's not the most versatile artist in the game. He, I mean, in what scope are you saying that? Like, maybe in his realm he is, but you can't say overall. Like, I don't, I don't know about that. He, I mean, he could be number five or something like that, but number one, the most versatile art, I don't think so. I don't think so. In this range, Tyler also uses the different vibes and styles of the tracks on this record to masterfully architect the story he is trying to tell, which from going on this insane ego trip on Ratata, where he is flexing about everything he has accomplished while also reminiscing on the high points of his journey over the years, to then Darling Eye, where right alongside the bubbly vocals and beat, he is exploring his emotions and delusions about love. Tyler really sets himself apart from 99% of rappers and really just all artists today because his storytelling is so multidimensional as it paints a grander picture than just putting words on paper ever could. As from the very subtle nuances in the instrumentals he is creating onward, every piece of his musical arrangements are all there to tell a story and give the listener the strongest emotional impact possible. And here- I mean, I don't know about all that. Sometimes I look at, I listen to Tyler. I don't think he's as deep as y'all making him out to be. That's just my personal opinion. I kind of get what he's doing and what he's saying. It's more about the visuals for me that actually makes his, uh, makes his, his messaging a little bit deeper. I don't know about the raps, but the, but the visuals to me is what makes the message hit home for me. If that makes sense. More than ever, it really reminds you that whenever you get to witness an artist that is able to do this, whether it's someone like a prime Ye, Kendrick Lamar, Andre 3000 back in the day, or Tyler the Creator now, it's really just such a marvel in of itself and is more definitive proof than anything else you can grapple with that highlights who are the sheer and utter best hip-hop artists in the world. And now speaking of being the best hip-hop artist in the world, Another characteristic of these once-in-a-lifetime generational talents in hip-hop is their ability to curate an album experience and find the most creative and innovative ways to tell a story and make a trackless flow and make sense. And now, in the modern era of music and hip-hop especially, one of the most important parts of this process is, of course, the features that surprise listeners on this journey and masterfully gel into this crescendo the artist is trying to create. And now while Tyler almost had us and tried trolling us as he said there were no features on this album, as we already heard Daniel Caesar's vocals in the background of St. Chroma, this already seemed like a joke, and fortunately it was, because the guests Tyler brings here only make this thing more exciting and even Yeah, so I seen some of the features on there and, and I'm hearing that he has some hidden features. You already know who everybody was looking for to be on the album was Kendrick. But I don't think Kendrick was in it. I'll be honest with you, I think Kendrick I don't think Kendrick's going to have any features on his album. And somebody said on Twitter, on X, they said they think Kendrick album is going to be called Illuminati or Columinati. Like the, like the, I don't think, I don't think uh, Machiavelli was called, it was called Machiavelli, but he, he said something about Columinati. Um, but Illuminati. That's what they're saying it's going to be called. So that's another story for another day. But yeah, let's keep it going. When it seemed like Tyler may have went too far bringing in certain names and splicing them all together into one cut like with Sexy Red, Glorilla, and Lil Wayne on the song Sticky. He manages to somehow put it all together and make it work, which is just amazing and really an anomaly because with this posse cut between Tyler, Wheezy, Sexy Red, and Glorilla, it's now joining a track like What's Your Name with NBA Youngboy from Call Me If You Get Lost is not just one of the standout bangers from the album, but due to the way it blends such a wide and shocking array of talent together and brings out the absolute best in them is genuinely amazing and a sentiment to just how fearless Tyler is as a creative at this point. I also think that Tyler... I also think that he he will always be as long as there's these guys out as long as there's a Kanye as long as there's a Drake as long as there a uh, 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 Ross um as long as there's Kendrick as long as there's a uh, uh, Cole Future he will always be under them 
he will always be under them. You know what I'm saying? Even though in my head, I'm putting him over, uh, I'm putting Tyler Creator over J. Cole. I really am because I think his albums are more uh, creatively are better than J. Cole's. I don't think Tyler is a better lyricist than J. Cole, but I think overall, if I had to count their albums, um, Born Center and uh, uh, Forest Hill Drive, but I definitely think that Igor could probably rival both of those albums. And then uh, Flowers, I believe it's called Flowers. Uh, the one where he's in the garden. I believe it's called Flowers. And then the other one, um, uh, the one, uh, the other one, I can't remember the name of it. Um, I definitely think that those albums can definitely rival uh, Forest Hill Drive and uh, Born Center. But outside of that, that's a very good battle. And I actually want to do a comparison battle. Who who is actually better? Who has better albums out of the out of the two? I think I'm gonna do a video dedicated to that. Who has better albums, J Cole or Tyler the Creator? And I'm gonna go through both of their albums. So let's go. Point in his career because seriously, who would just ever think to even do something like this and then execute it this well? And now beyond a mega collaboration like we see here, other big names show up all over this thing with two of the most memorable being Tizo Touchdown on Darling Eye, who just delivers some beautiful medley lines here that perfectly foil the performance and production of Tyler. And even more memorable and powerful than this feature, Chromacopia marks the first time we ever hear Tyler the Creator and Childish Gambino collaborate on a song, and after so many years of this collab being anticipated and desired by fans. That's another dude that I actually think he's pretty cool. I like him, and I don't really like, I like uh, Childish Gambino, but I really don't like Chance the Rapper. And, and, and Chance the Rapper, I mean, he just never done nothing for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I listen to Acid Rap, and I listen to a bunch of his albums, a bunch of his songs, and it's like, I don't really know about this guy. But this guy here, yeah, I definitely like uh, Charles Gambino. We have finally got it, and while Gambino doesn't deliver a full-on verse or anything, just hearing his one-of-a-kind voice and amazing singing just changed the atmosphere of the entire record, makes it all worth it, and again, shows Tyler's rare found ability to know how to use everyone he works with for the best sake of his vision and the art first, and not just the star power or marketing of the record by having a big name on it. And now joining this list and making for an arguably better feature than these, and maybe even the best guest performance on the entire album. We see Tyler the Creator and Schoolboy Q collab for the first time in years, and while on the snippet Tyler released of this a few days before the record drop, it already sounded amazing with his hypnotic yet tense instrumental, which just allowed for Tyler to rap with a sense of ruthlessness. So yeah, that's what that's what I was thinking too, because I seen uh the I seen that right there, um that song uh they thought I was dead or thought I was dead. And within that album, I seen that there was features on the album, but on the song, on the video, there was no features. Because when I went, when I looked at the video, I didn't see, and it was only like a minute and something long. So let's go. It's an urgency that we hardly ever see. Q only manages to make things even better here, as his haunting bravado perfectly matches the energy of Tyler and the beat. And now, when it comes to Tyler the Creator working with rappers from Top Dog Entertainment. School Boy Q isn't the only MC we see here, and while many people wanted to see Kendrick Lamar on this album, which while I get from a hype standpoint, in reality, Kendrick being here probably would have taken away from the actual story and narrative of what Tyler was doing here, and just made whatever their collab was too much of a spectacle to release it at this moment, because based on the way Kendrick and Tyler keep showing love to one another, I'm sure they have worked on something together that we may eventually hear, but just not yet. But now in the meantime, joining the world of Chromacopia masterfully, we see Tyler feature none other than the rapper who Kendrick Lamar said is the hardest out right now in Dochi on the track Balloon. And with Dochi getting the biggest feature spot of her entire career. So I have not listened to her yet. I'm going to go listen to that, that uh, album. I'm actually listening to it right after I get off of this. And I'm going to give my review of it or a breakdown of it, but I haven't listened to it. Um... Yeah, I got a lot going on. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. When it comes to this video things, I have a lot going on. I'm still trying to work on this Kendrick, uh, this Kendrick, uh, 
uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Stepper's uh, whole breakdown. It's like, it's going to be like three hours long. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. It's very difficult to do because I'm doing something that that no one's ever did with this. You know what I'm saying? So it's difficult. And I'm still on the first track. I ain't going to lie. Now, somebody told me maybe I should just release it every two weeks, release one track every two weeks, and then put it all together later. I was thinking about doing that, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm going to listen to her album. And uh, let's keep it going. Career, she makes sure people will remember her name by showing off her one-of-a-kind energy and lyrical ferocity that makes her such an electrifying MC and performer. And with the energy she brings to the table here, Doji really shows herself to be the perfect match to Tyler, the creator. And ultimately, with all of these features perfectly molding into the world of Chromacopia, and Tyler really using every single voice as an instrument to enhance the project, even in such instances where he is using just a single Baby Keem ad-lib to create the perfect moment on a track like Like Him. Chromacopia makes for arguably his best use of guest performances yet. And now between this, the dynamic and detailed production which Tyler is the sole producer of aside from the intro track which he co-produced, well Tyler the Creator pulling all of this off is nothing new at this point because on each album since Flower Boy he has only further harnessed all of these skills and grown them. I don't think people realize yet how impressive it is that now Tyler has delivered not one, not two, not three, but four entire albums that reach a bar of quality that few rappers and artists ever even reach once. And I mean, in all honesty, with many rappers who we consider to be great, there are hardly any that have made four albums on this level, and really only a handful. Again, I can say that for his fans and for people that like him, maybe that's true. You know what I'm saying? Overall, I don't know. I don't know if it, I can say that these are all tens or something like that. I don't. I wouldn't say that. Maybe, maybe Igor. I could give Igor a classic. Um, but yeah, and I'm not knocking him. I'm just giving him a little pushback. Well, let's keep it going. People who have done so in a row, and with Tyler performing, writing, and producing on every single song here, this brings him into a tier that even fewer artists can hang alongside him in, because he has truly solidified himself as the ultimate artist you can be in today's era, as he holds more creative control over his vision than most musicians could ever imagine, and from the fact that he seemingly brought this world all to life with his own skills and mind first, to him literally putting this record out on a Monday, where everyone can have a different and more personal listening experience with this record, because we can sit with it all day after day this week while we go through our own routines. All in all, every single aspect about Chromacopia, as we can see, is right now proving itself to be more than a game changer. And while there is still so much to discuss, now, I will say this: um, when 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 Tyler first started, they I believe they started independent. They would they really wasn't a part of nothing. They just did their own thing. And that's probably why he has such creative control over his stuff. But we're going to finish this out. Cover and explore about this record. And I definitely will be making more videos going deeper into it because Tyler has left us with so much to uncover. So be sure to subscribe to see that. What's clear is that this is another great. That's actually it right there. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, man. I think that uh, what uh, Tyler is doing is pretty, pretty awesome. Not gonna lie. I think what he's doing is pretty awesome. I think he should just keep doing what he's doing. And um, we'll see. Also, too, man, shout out to that guy who took over the show. You know what I'm saying? I had to get that out of here. But uh, yeah, man. Happy Halloween to everybody. Y'all have a good Halloween. Get yourself some good candy. Take your kids out. All that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, man. I'll be back in the studio soon. See y'all. Peace. Oh, yes, that was fun. Happy Halloween, everybody. Good night. See ya. Bye bye.